HCL Portal 9.5, Red Hat OpenShift is officially supported for our portal containers. In this video, I will demonstrate how to deploy and update HCL Portal 9.5 on OpenShift. Reviewing the HCL Portal documentation, we can see the steps needed to deploy Portal on OpenShift. First, we need to download the required software from the HCL Software Portal. Under the HCL Portal 8590 9.5 CFs directory, we find the latest OpenShift containers. You can see there are two packages for each version, the core and the other. In this video, I will use the 9.5 CF181 packages. As you can see, I have downloaded and extracted the two zip files. They are a total of 11 images and a zip file with the scripts that we can use to deploy and update Portal. In this video, I will only install Portal, so the only two images I need are the cloud operator and the DX core image. Now for me to be able to access these images from my OpenShift environment, I first need to upload them to my private registry. So I'll start with first loading the images using the docker load i command to my local docker registry. Note, if you're using podman, you can do the same thing using the podman load command. Once both images are loaded, I need to tag them with my private registry info. In this video, I'm using dxhub.com as my private registry. The names I'm using are cloud-operator and core for these images. And the tag I'm using is oih underscore 181. Once they're tagged, I can use the docker push command to upload these to my private registry. Now with that complete, looking back at the documentation, you can see the details on how to use the scripts provided. Note, in this video, I'll be using the scripts, but you can deploy Portal by just using the YAML files directly. Before I use the scripts though, I need to update them to use the OC command since I'm going to run these on OpenShift. I also need to update operator.yaml with the image and tag name of the cloud operator. With that done, I need to also create the storage class and volume for my portal deployment. Referring to the documentation, you can see sample YAMLs of each. I have copied these samples into YAML files and modified the volume to point to my NFS server. With all the scripts, volume, and images available, I'm ready to begin my deployment. But before I start, I do want to mention that I'm deploying Portal on a CRC OpenShift environment. CRC is obviously not supported for production. I'm using CRC for demo purposes only. 
I first use the OC login command to log into OpenShift. I next need to run the deploy CRD script to create the custom resource definitions. Then I'll create my storage class and volume using the YAML files I created. Finally, I can run the deploy DX script. I'm going to start with just passing in the namespace or for OpenShift a project, and then verify everything is ready before deploying portal. Switching over to my OpenShift web console, you can see my project was created here. Let's verify the storage class and volume next. Everything looks good, so let's deploy Portal now. As you can see in the documentation, it'll list all the parameters required for the DX script. Here's a command with my parameters. The first parameter we have already seen is my namespace or project. The second is the number of replicas, in this case is one. The third is my private registry. The fourth is the image name of the portal core image. In this case, I name mine core. The fifth is the tag used for the core image. The sixth is the volume name I created. The seventh is the volume class I created. And finally, the last parameter is for the database. Since this is a new deployment, Derby is initially configured. So I'll run the script. Back on the OpenShift web console, you can see my project. And we can see the cloud operator and DX deployment pods are already created. The portal pod will start in init mode while it configures the WP profile. We can monitor the events tab of the DX deployment pod to check the progress. Once the WP profile is configured, the pod will change from init to running. However, we can still see it's not ready, which usually means the portal server is still starting up. Once it goes into the ready state, portal should now be accessible. If we access the routes, we can see the route for portal. Clicking on the portal route, we get a 404 because we need to add portal to the end of the URL. And there you go, portal is loaded and we can log in using the default credentials, which is WPS admin for both the user ID and password. And we can verify this is 9.5 CF181 in the about portal portlet. At this point, you need to perform a database transfer if you want to be able to run multiple portal replicas since Derby only supports one replica. If you access the routes again, you can see the routes for the configuration wizard and the walls admin console. If we go to the configuration wizard, which I have already bookmarked here, you will find the steps to perform the database transfer. I will not discuss this topic in this video because it's been covered in a different video. Please see the video description below if you would like instructions on how to perform a database transfer. After performing a database transfer, I will run the update DX script with the same parameters as before, except the last one I will specify DB2, which is the database I used to perform my transfer. Now you may have wondered why I chose to use the CF181 images when the CF182 were available. The reason, as you may have guessed, is so I can also demonstrate how to upgrade to a newer image release. I have uploaded the cloud operator and the core images to my private registry, following the same steps as I demonstrated at the beginning of the video, so I won't repeat that here. To upgrade, 
I first need to delete my DX deployment using the OC delete command. On the OpenShift web console, you can see my portal pod has been deleted. I then need to make the portal volume available by editing and removing the claim reference section After saving, we can see the volume is available again. Next, I need to update the operator.yaml file to point to my new cloud operator. In this case, I use the same image name with a 182 tag. With all that done, I can run the update DX script with the same parameters I used before, except I will pass the 182 tag for my new core image. On the OpenShift web console, we can see the DX deployment pod has been recreated and is being configured since it's in init mode. This may take a little longer since this time we have an existing WP profile that needs to be upgraded to the 182 version. You can check the logs to monitor the progress using the OC logs command. You should also ensure that the apply CF task completes successfully by either using the OC logs command or directly reviewing the config trace.log. Under events, we can confirm the 182 image is being used. We can also confirm in both of the pod's YAML files. With the DX deployment pod back running, we can test to see if we can hit portal with its route. and we can confirm we now see 9.5 CF182. This concludes this video on deploying Portal 9.5 on Red Hat OpenShift.